And just two weeks to go to Election Day, Republican candidate for Governor John Cox is joining us live this morning. He's sitting down with Reggie right now. Hi, Reggie. And Mr. Cox has been gracious enough to meet us so early in the morning at 642. <laughs> so it's great to see you here. Thank great you so to much be for with. being here. Thank you. Thank you, Reggie. OK, so we obviously have just really days to go. Days before, to go. Days before to go. Californians make their choice. And uh, we do have some polls that I know that you've been looking at as well. Yeah. And uh, the polls are, are consistent telling the same story, not necessarily consistent about what the gap is. So right. we'll go through that right now. The most recent poll done by the LA Times, it shows that 54% of likely voters favor Gavin Newsom, our current lieutenant governor. Over you, uh, John Cox gets 31%. A previous poll that was done in September showed that the gap was smaller than that, about 12%. Either way, there's a pretty big gap to jump before we get to this election. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah, I'm not a celebrity. I'm not a career politician. I'm a businessman. I built a business over 40 years. And I know this state is just not very managed very well. Uh, we are almost unaffordable and unlivable for most people in this state. Uh, our cost of living, the cost of housing is outrageous, and especially here in the Bay Area. Uh, the cost of gasoline, uh, uh, the housing uh, situation is really driving a lot of people out of the Bay Area and out of the state. Uh, our school systems are now 47th in the nation. Uh, our water uh, is being rationed. Uh, we're being told that's going to be uh, on the table in 2022. Uh, you're going to be limited to 55 gallons a day, which is about half of what normally uh, people would be expecting to use. So there's a lot of management issues involved in the state. And, you know, Mr. Newsom has been there for 16 years, hasn't addressed these problems. He was mayor of San Francisco, as you know, for a long time. And the homeless situation got worse. The homeless situation is a tragedy and out of control all across California. I have plans to get that uh, rectified as well. And uh, I think people need a change. I think people want a definite change. They love this state. The rest of the country's had a wonderful economic recovery, but Californians are still finding it hard to be able to afford to live, and that's the real problem. Well, let me talk to you about housing, because I think that almost all of us can agree that yeah. housing is our biggest concern, and especially here in the, in the Bay Area. And part of that, as you know, because you have built uh, apartments for many years as I a have. part of your career, is that we just don't have enough of it. And uh, there was a study that found that we would need 350,000 units every year for the next seven years in order to make up for the deficit in housing in this state. Right now, we only build about 85,000 well, homes a year. It's, it's two issues. It's yes, we don't have enough supply and that helps drive up the, the cost. But it's also the cost driven up by government. Government regulations, government red tape, lawsuits, impact fees and taxes, uh, the, the incredible delays. It takes 12, 15 years to get approvals in some cases, and that just adds to the cost because builders have to carry the debt for longer and pay the taxes while they're waiting for How that approval. How do you approval. cut that time down? You've got to have leadership. You've got to amend CEQA, which is the California Environmental Quality Act. We can build the standards and we can make sure they don't hurt the environment. But CEQA has gone overboard. It's being used for litigation by law lawyers to drive better deals or keep competitors out. So do you rewrite that completely? You, you have to because you, you are not accomplishing what you want to accomplish now. I mean, it is really holding up construction. I build apartments in Indiana uh, for one-fifth, one-sixth of what it costs to build in the Bay Area. And Indiana is a wonderful state. I mean, Indianapolis is a very modern, wonderful city that has wonderful standards. And I can build wonderful apartments for 90000 there that cost 600000 in San Francisco. And, the, and a, a large part of the difference is land, but most of that difference is government-caused and I have plans to cut that cost. I asked some of our viewers if they would send in some questions. I don't have time sure. to get to all of them, but right. I, I thought I got a, a good one okay. uh, this morning. And sure. the, the question is about what you would do in response to some of President Trump's policies, and uh, the, especially as it relates to California. And uh, he wanted to know, we, we heard the president say recently that some of the fault, according to him, for our fires is because of California itself, and that he would perhaps withdraw some of the federal funds when it comes to wildfires in our state. This is a huge issue, especially in the Bay Area. Oh, we suffered a major set issue. of fires last year. What's your response to President Trump? The Santa Rosa fires were a disaster. And, you know, 
what, what we need to do is manage the forest. We don't build fire breaks into the forest. We're not cleaning out dead and diseased trees or, or brush. Uh, there's 130 million dead trees or diseased trees in the forest, so we've got to do that. But, you know, President Trump is not the issue in this race. Let's face it, he didn't create the gas tax. He didn't create the housing shortage. He didn't create schools that are 47th in the nation where half of our kids in our schools can't read to grade level. But I just want he to get back to nothing the, to do with back, any of that. Back to the fire issue for, for a moment. Right. The fact that he's saying that he could withhold federal funds well, would directly I would, I would, I would fight on I would obviously fight on that. But what I would also do is make sure that our forests are managed. The current political class in Sacramento led by Mr. Newsom, has failed the people of this state. We have not managed the forests. We have to build fire breaks. We have to clean out the dead and diseased trees. These infernos are, are fueled by all this brush on the ground and all these dead trees. We have to be able to go in there and manage those forests. That has not been done. Uh, but, but to be clear, you would have a conversation with President Trump. Oh, of course. Trump. I will fight the president when, it, when it's needed because of you know, California's interests. But again, you know, President Trump didn't create the affordability or the livability crisis. He didn't create a water shortage. We are facing water rationing in this state uh, where we aren't going to be able to take a shower and wash our clothes in the same day. That's on the political class. That's on Mr. Newsom for failing to build reservoirs, failing to recycle water, failure to, uh, to build uh, desalination plants. Uh, the people of this state deserve better and they want to change. I just have a few seconds left, but I want to ask you about a story that has uh, really blown up uh, here in the Bay Area and across the country. And it is something that President Trump announced uh, in the New York Times. Their reporting says that he wants to essentially change the definition of gender so that there would be, uh, your gender would be male or female based upon the genitals you were born with. A lot of people in the LGBT community are concerned about that because they say essentially, erases transgender as a definition of people. How would you respond to that to protect Californians? You know, I, I will listen to people and what their views are. And certainly, I, that's not the highest thing on my agenda. I know it's a lot of important, uh, it's, it's very important to the people of this city and this state. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll analyze what's necessary to be done there. And, and I'll try to get a consensus of the people to do that. And if, if it's at variance with what the president wants, I'll fight him on it. But I'm focused well, what does your completely gut tell you on, about that. Would you support him making that definition in Health and Human Services? Uh, you know, I haven't really looked at that issue one iota. I really, you know, I think it's not a good idea to try to redefine gender at all. Uh, let's let people live the way they want to live. I, I'm all for that. Uh, but I'm directed at making the state affordable, making it livable, making sure we have good schools and water available and good roads, which we need. Uh, that's not been done in the last eight years, and I think people are ready for a change in those areas. All right. So much more to talk about. I John know. Cox, we appreciate you being here. I know you Thank have an you. event that is going to be later this morning in San Jose to talk we about. Are. We're going to talk the about the gas, the gas tax. tax. Yeah, we'll another, be following that. another thing that's really hurt the affordability of the state. People have to choose between buying a tank of gas and groceries. That shouldn't be the case. All right. Out of time. Mr. Cox, appreciate it. Good luck to you. you. Thanks, Roger. All right. And we've also invited Democratic candidate and former San Francisco Mayor Gavin Newsom to be live right here in ABC 7 Mornings. That invitation stands, Mr. Newsom. We would love to see you. We have not, uh, we have not received a commitment from the campaign, but we still have a few days left. Remember, we have complete election coverage on our website, abc7news.com. You can hear more from the candidates there who are running for state and local office.